with all the anxiety and the hemming and hawing about the state of the movies and the historically sluggish summer box office and the problem with streaming and mm-hmm. all of that, mm-hmm. it's good to know that one plus one still equals two. Bad Boys delivers and Bad Boys gets paid, baby. Bad Boys had the uh, second boys, biggest opening boys. of the summer. And the fifth biggest opening of the year with 56.6 million domestic and 105 million uh, worldwide. Wow. Um, A hell of an opening. Brett, why do you think this is? What does this say to you? Okay, this says to me a couple things. Um, This is number one. And because we predicted, because Sony had dropped the projections to 30 plus. Their internal projections they got, were plummeting week over week. They got spooked by how bad Furiosa, Furiosa yep. did and Fall Guy did yep. and If did. And they said, oh, oh, it's oh, oh, movies are dead. Eh, 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 eh. It just needs to be the right movie for theaters, I guess. Uh, I mean, look, Bad Boys always does well. It always does well. It is going to, in the next two or three weeks, it's going to surpass one billion as a franchise in terms of in terms of total box office. These movies always do well, um, even when they get even when they get underestimated. Uh, the last Bad Boys, uh, which was Bad Boys for Life in 2020. Was a January release. Yep. You remember this? Yep. They released a Bad Boys movie in January, I guess, thinking that the magic was dead. And then it became the biggest January release of all time by more than $20 million. Yeah. <laughs> like it shattered January Huge. records. People always come out to the Bad Boys movies no matter what time of Bad year. Bad Boys 3 did $425 million worldwide. $425 million worldwide. The third one in the franchise. And this was, Third, which came out almost twenty years after the second one, incredible. Twenty years, and an interesting uh, asterisk. They ended up being very fortunate they released it in January because they released it in January twenty twenty. That's right. If they had waited, this thing would not have come out. It Six. wouldn't have it wouldn't have got a theatrical release if they if they made it a summer movie. Now they don't get credit for that because they didn't plan it that way because January twenty twenty no, we weren't plan talking COVID. about we weren't talking they didn't Sony Pictures <laughs> they did didn't not know plan. about COVID. Despite what you've heard, Sony Pictures is not responsible for for no, the coronavirus. No, no. Um, but what that tells me is that it doesn't matter when Bad Boys comes out, January, this summer, it doesn't matter what the expectations are, et cetera, et cetera, internally within the studio, the movie going public comes out for the Bad Boys movies. Um, I think it's because they always have great trailers, they are fun, they are action-packed, they just give you pure spectacle without, you know, a whole lot to, like, think about that's just it's just kind of pure cinema it's just like pure big budget hollywood cinema it is the it's the you know legacy of 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 michael bay which we'll talk about it's the enduring popularity of will smith um uh it's just it's it's bad boys you kind of don't have to overthink it and i think we were like we were tempted to overthink it because of how bad movies have been. And then when we post it online, everybody's telling us online, oh, the movies are too expensive now. I just want to wait on streaming, this and that. And so you start to think, oh, maybe there's this sort of insurmountable cultural trend here where the movies are just dying a slow death. Not all movies, not bad boys. And I also think, speaking of streaming, another um, uh, thing uh, that you can attribute its success to is that Bad Boys has not yet, the franchise has not yet sort of aligned itself with a streaming service in any sort of inherent way. You can watch them all on Hulu right now, all the old ones, but like you don't think of it, you don't associate it with, because it's a 90s franchise that's still going, you just in your mind associate Bad Boys with movie theaters. You think about it as a movie theater movie. You don't just sort of, you haven't had that slow sort of, you know, connotative thing where it's like, oh, that's like, I can just wait and see it on Netflix in a couple weeks, or oh, I can wait and see. You know, you don't associate it with streaming. You associate it with going to see in a movie theater. And I'll tell you what, I saw it at ten thirty on a weekday. Mm-hmm. There weren't a lot of people in my movie theater. I wouldn't call it packed, but it was the most like raucous movie audience I, I've I've been with for a movie this year. Even like a small ten thirty a.m. weekday audience. Who's going to see Bad Boys at ten thirty a.m. on a weekday? People that really want to see Bad Boys and are ready to have fun because they were. I was laughing out loud. They were laughing out loud. Was, My theater there, was it loving was great. It. it was great. Man, woman, child, the young, the old, black, white, otherwise, 
the the whole pastiche of America, the great melting pot, all enjoying Bad Boys. Everybody likes Bad four. Boys. Everybody liked Bad Boys Ride or Die in my theater. Actually, all jokes aside, it was kind of, well, A, it was very soothing to be in a group of just like complete and total demographic, you know, ex- expanse of just like old people, young people, people younger than me, older than me. It was just, you know, people there alone, people there with their friends. And I saw it also in a weird time, Brett. It wasn't like I saw the 7 p.m. on Friday. It was it was during the day, during the week. And the people in the theater were loving it. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And I loved being with them, loving it. And it was very, like, um, culturally stress-relieving. And that was sort of my whole takeaway with Bad Boys and maybe the larger franchise. But Bad Boys 4, just to say Bad Boys Ride or Die, you know, it's about two buddy cops. We know them, we love them, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. And they need to team up together one more time with a motley crew of random family members and Rhea Seahorn. <laughs> <laughs> like Rhea like, Seahorn popping up from Better Call like, Saul. Like, and, and they're going to. With leave. an agenda. I was like, how are, how does this new character have such a impassioned agenda? Because yep. this, this yeah. movie has mm-hmm. almost become like Shakespearean in its like in its scope. There was like bastard son, like aven- yes. like bastard sons who killed fathers yes. having to be like avenged and like it's there is there's there's a there's some crazy stakes but without losing the fun of the franchise and the silliness of it all they didn't also they weren't interested in kind of disposing with anything from the previous movies like that is that is gospel like all these things that happened is gospel and you better believe that like mike will smith's bastard son who not three years ago was trying to murder him and literally murdered their their captain. Yep. But now he's Joey sort Pants. of now, now he's like, you know, a pretty rock solid guy that they break out of like a high <laughs> maximum prison. And he sort of like helps Will yeah. Smith be like an extrajudicial assassin as they fight in sort of like a random liminal space off off the coast of Cuba. It just took one yeah. heartfelt speech in a car and then that character kind of did a one eighty and yes. then became a good guy. And you know what? I bought it because I bought it. Yeah, because this is bad boys, family, baby. Right. Um, I now mean, people want to talk about the bad boys, the success of bad boys. One of the one of the main things we're talking about is like Will Smith has still got it. Will Smith has still got the juice. Post the slap. Post Scientology weirdness. Post all the weird. Post the Jada stuff. All the Jada stuff. Post all the weird uh, Will Smith weirdness uh, that we've endured over the last several years. It don't matter when it comes to box office. The guy still shows up. He's still a movie star. He still delivers. That's news, man. Yeah, it is. It is. It is shocking to see. We him didn't know. Give a give what is essentially a like mid nineties Will Smith performance now after everything that's gone on. He just still locks in and gives you a Will Smith performance. I will say though, I think I know that Will Smith is putting butts in seats. Say it. Martin Lawrence is the absolute star of this movie. That's right. Like, bar none. It's almost not even close. He is, I think he's the star of the franchise as a whole, but definitely ride or die, he is he is the best part of the movie, and it's not even close. He steals the franchise. He is giving, he is funny as he's ever been. I would say funnier, now that he's like, older and he's got the jowls and he's a little more like degaf and he's just like he's just like older martin lawrence is so funny and he leans in so hard i was i was fully cracking up out loud in the theater there is just last so many laugh out loud moments he's responsible for pretty much all of them yeah it's a sort of for a big budget movie it's like a weird fearless comedic performance you get like an up close shot of his like tongue with like fruit punch sloshing off it there's so many like crazy close-ups of him he's like physically fearless throughout the throughout the whole movie all the physical comedy it's his bits are kind of weird and surreal in certain ways because he has this like brush with death early in the movie and then his parts were funnily they're so funny funny. and then he like thinks he can't die he sort of like lives on the astral plane in this movie he's living in some weird space speaking of liminal spaces he's in some sort of extra dimensional space where he thinks he can't die he thinks he's been like blessed because he like survived this brush with death it's like you survive like 18 brushes with death every movie, but something about this one, he thinks he can't be killed. He's like dancing in traffic. He's 
communicating with alligators like this th like it has some like weird surreal moments that are so funny but not off brand and that premise just comedically pays off such gangbusters the uh -huh. whole time he thinks he's invincible keeps putting himself in dangerous situations and the comedic payoff is so great brett i love martin lawrence in all these movies but you're so right i i was worried going into this movie that martin looked a little old and he is a little old but he's certainly not done being the funniest guy in the room even with his current like physical limitations just being an older guy but um he he i'm glad that you kind of framed it the way you did because as much as will smith's putting butts in seats and as much as watching a bad boys for 25 30 years after the first one came out um it's a bit of a nostalgic sort of experience and martin lawrence is so so much a part of that just as equal if not well just as equal at least as will smith yeah. into that yeah. like nostalgic experience like will smith has been this huge part of our lives ever since uh fresh prince and bad boys but you know martin lawrence like he you know think about all of his stand-up and then he had you know def jam when he was hosting that oh, yeah. and then yeah. and then literally martin on fox which yeah. made you know which huge tur show. turned fox into Mega a, a, a Mega network show. essentially yes. yeah as essential as the nfl and making fox a real network because when you go back it's and watch a, the first bad boys which i know you watched the entire franchise this past I week i watched one and two and um ride or die did not get to bad boys for life but when you go back and watch the first one uh which came out in 95 um Martin Lawrence is getting top billing because he he's like he is the wrecking acknowledged kind of lead in Bad Boys One. Right. And Will Smith is it's like you meet Martin Lawrence and you establish him as the protagonist. And then Will Smith sort of flies into the movie as like the as like the real bad boy, the cool. The, like the cool guy. Right. Because um, Will Smith is I mean, he had really only done six degrees of separation uh, in terms of movies, which is more, you know, it's an indie. It's not like but this was the beginning of Will Smith, the movie star, the transition from Fresh Prince into full movie stardom. Um, but in the first one, he hasn't made that transition yet. And so Martin Lawrence is really getting top billing. Um, and it feels like the franchise as a whole is kind of more a little more, you know, Martin Lawrence feels like the root feels like the anchor of it in a, in a lot of ways, emotionally, comedically, um, uh, from from start to finish. And so I'm glad they kept that going. I'm glad, you know, they didn't do some sort of just, you know, some sort of, uh, I don't know, cheap ploy for the box office and sort of make it, you know, Will Smith's movie. This is still very much Martin Lawrence's uh, uh, franchise. Um, and, and Will does Will, but like, but like to me, like, man, Martin is, Martin is the, is, is, is most of it. He's most of the appeal. Brett, you need them both. You need both the bad boys to make I the bad boys. I know you do. And speaking of that, I love how much they say the phrase bad boys in bad boys. Constantly. Joey Pants, um, uh, who is their, their beloved old, like, uh, captain, captain, uh, who dies in, uh, bad boys for life. The third one. Uh, but he comes it's back assassinated by Will Smith's bastard son. That's, that's right. right. That's true. It's truly, truly gets Shakespearean. Uh, if, you, if you're underestimating bad boys, underestimate it at your own peril. That's mm -hmm. what I say. Um, mm -hmm. But in this one, as you've seen, if you've seen the trailer, uh, Joey Pants is in it through these like these like cell phone videos he's recorded before he died because he's basically was killed as part of like a cover up this, plot. I'm probably dead. And so in one of the uh, cell phone videos, he says to them, he goes, you're my bad boys. Yeah. And then even the, the villains, even the vi boys. even the villains when they're when they're coming, they're like, oh, the bad boys are coming. <laughs> they're just known as the bad boys in this world, and I freaking love it. Uh, I love that hilarious. There's so many good set pieces. This this franchise is so good for action set pieces, creative, clownish, sort of goofy but action packed set pieces. There's one here that feels like a sort of Art Basel parody uh you know the big art show that is in miami every year full yes, of like of pretentious course. art and this and yes. that and all the like celebrities go and they can spend a, you know millions of dollars on something that's gonna hang in their their third house um there's this part where they go to this like big sort of goofy art exhibit and john sally is the is like the artist the um who, well, he's yeah he's like the He's the curator. He's the he curator the of shop. it. That's yeah. right. Yes. And then uh, there's a shootout, though, that happens in the art exhibit. And these big, giant bowls of, like, candy, like, sort of pop art sort of candy are being, like, exploded. And jelly beans are going everywhere. And that's when the fruit punch is sloshing. <laughs> and Martin Lawrence, who has a junk food addiction, but he can't eat it right now because he has, a, has like, a heart problem. Heart, heart, heart attack, yeah. is, is, uh, is just using this opportunity to kill bad guys and, like, chomp jelly beans out of midair it's it's, it's so crazy funny. it's a crazy movie it's so fun freaking bad boys 
Why did Bad Boys make so much money? Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's fun. Because people trust it. They know what they're going to get. They're going to have fun at the movies. God forbid people get to have fun at the movies.